We are joined by Dr. Genia Janab Walcott from the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for interviewing me. Tell us about your work with colonic polyps. Sure, um, thanks for inviting me. Um, I think the majority of us think of the uh, adenomatous polyp as being the precursor to the majority of the sporadic uh, colorectal cancers. But it's become really uh, understood over the past few years that there are different types of uh, colonic adenomas that with the malignant potential. And particularly the serrated adenoma has been recognized as a new type of lesion that can also turn into a carcinoma. And there's been a great effort in actually uh, finding molecular profiles that could define the different types of uh, uh, colonic cancers and their precursor lesions. And there's been a great deal of effort with uh, uh, defining these molecular changes, such as BRAF mutations, uh, uh, hypermethylation, and epigenetic silencing. And um, the study that, that uh, we are presenting today as, a, as an abstract is looking at uh, serrated colonic polyps and um, looking at uh, a, a panel of methylation markers that could molecularly pro profile these markers, uh, the, these lesions. Because at this point in the literature, there really is no consensus with respect to the number of markers that people use to actually define these uh, polyps. Uh, people use anywhere from 5 to 10 to 20. And as you can imagine, on a clinical basis, this really would not be feasible uh, to use so many different markers to define methylation. And so our study shows that a very simple four marker uh, panel could probably uh, could re reliably identify these unique serrated polyps and their carcinomas. And what is interesting about the serrated polyp and their carcinomas is that they, they seem to have unique clinical features, that they're primarily right-sided cancers and they're more prevalent in older women. So, um, and understanding the molecular profile and profile of these uh, lesions, uh, tumors, and their polyps, and the, the clinical uh, behavior of them would really help uh, identify new targets for uh, uh, treatment. Doctor, you're also interested in GI genetic risk evaluation and barriers. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, it's been uh, appreciated for a number of years that U.S. physicians uh, and also abroad, there's, uh, there's really a deficiency in their understanding and recognizing patients at high risk for inherited forms of colon cancer. And uh, there have been a lot of efforts to understand what are the barriers both from the physicians and the provider, health providers uh, perspective as well as the patient as to why these patients are either not getting referred or not getting to the GI genetic uh, 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 clinics. Because we know that Lynch syndrome, which is the inherited form of colon cancer, is as prevalent as uh, familial breast cancer, BRCA1 and BRCA2 uh, carriers. But um, it's, uh, it's been shown that uh, ge breast genetics is much better known in the community for, from the patients as well as the providers with respect to understanding the, the molecular pathway of it and also who is required to actually have a, a genetic risk evaluation. So we did this very simple survey at Abramson Cancer Center looking at um, patient, uh, looking at physicians at different uh, 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 departments, uh, not only medical oncology, but also surgical uh, oncology, uh, gastroenterology, um, internal medicine, just really to get an idea of uh, what is the understanding of the physicians of who is really indicated to go for genetic risk evaluation? What are the criteria um, and whether p uh, physicians really uh, know the, the guidelines for recommendations for follow-up? And what we found out, which was um, you know, interesting and somewhat uh, disturbing is, is that majority of the physicians had very limited knowledge of GI genetics and who should really be referred. And again, these are highly subspecialized. Some of these were highly subspecialized physicians in medical oncology and gastroenterology who really uh, should know the indications for referring someone who might be at risk for uh, uh, a familial form of uh, inherited uh, cancers. For example, in our study, we showed that about 70% of the physicians did not know how to refer to our GI genetics clinic at Penn. Um, we also did a very simple part of our uh, survey was to get a baseline evaluation of their knowledge of uh, GI genetics and did a, a intervention where they were provided a pamphlet with information about GI genetics and the test was repeated. And 
it showed that we can learn that after a very simple educational intervention, majority of the providers um, significantly improved their scores on the testing. So that, that goes to the, uh, the idea that one of the barriers clearly is that we as physicians are not educated enough on GI genetics and the indications of referring patients for uh, risk evaluation. Doctor, thanks for sharing the results of your research. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, Tom. It's in Oncology. It's on Oncuview.tv.